Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome, bienvenue, bonjour. Um, thank you for coming and supporting women in technology. Yes! Woo! Awesome. Super excited to be here. Um, this is my first ever conference talk, so uh, I love you all, and we'll get through this one way or another. Um, and appropriately, it's about stress. Uh, so, about two years ago, I was working as a back-end engineer at one of the fastest growing startups in New York City. Um, I was living in Queens at the time, and my office was in Manhattan, a uh, distance of about four miles, seven kilometers, uh, and it took over an hour to travel by train into the office. Uh, so an hour to get there and an hour to come home. Uh, one day, I just started my glorious commute as always. I squished myself into this tiny packed train with hundreds of my fellow New Yorkers. Uh, and started my daily journey in the city. Um, a few minutes into the ride, I started no to notice that my heart started racing. Uh, I started shaking uncontrollably and just felt ice cold. Uh, I started gasping for breath. I couldn't breathe at all. I didn't know what was going on. I was trying to play it cool and hide it. I was on a subway with a lot of people. I didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, I was getting so dizzy that I was seeing stars, and eventually I just couldn't see out of my left eye at all. That's weird. Um, I started dry heaving very, very audibly, and from this just uncontrollable wave of nausea that fell over me, I was going to throw up on this train. Uh, I was trapped. I needed to get off this train right now. Uh, I, we were in between stations, I couldn't leave, I thought I was going to die, I felt like I was going to die, I was going to die on this train, I was going to die on this train by myself, all alone with these crazy people, and I was going to throw up and pass out in the process. Um, so that was my first ever panic attack. Uh, and now these attacks only increased in frequency and intensity as time went on to where I was having multiple panic attacks a week and sometimes multiple a day. Uh, and I tried to really reflect at that point, why was this happening? Um, and why did I get here? I don't want this to be my normal everyday uh, experience. So I started to reflect back on, you know, my life and my day-to-day. -day. So at work, I felt really anxious in meetings. I felt like I had nothing to contribute, and I really felt isolated. I was always, as a female back-end engineer, usually one or two of the female in the male-dominated group. I felt extreme pressure to meet deadlines. I also didn't push back on these deadlines because I thought they felt so extreme because I just didn't know what I was doing. That had to be it. I started working at my desk through lunch. I stopped taking breaks at work. Oh, I have a clicker. <laughs> uh, I, yes, I, uh, where are we? I started working late to catch up on work that I felt behind on. I kept my computer and Slack on all the time. So I was just watching, lurking at all the Slack channels, making sure there was no issues with production, nothing like that, and that our CEO wasn't at channeling general. What's going on, Jackie? This must be your fault. Um, I really didn't want to code anymore. I was so scared and so stressed of messing up that I just didn't want to. I was avoiding it. I started isolating myself from my friends and family. I would cancel plans very oftenly to work. Um, and honestly, I just didn't have the mental energy to even leave. And I kept getting sick. I kept getting migraines. I kept just feeling awful. I was getting so anxious at the sight of my code editor, just seeing it would just increase my anxiety. And I was ashamed of myself. I felt like, you know, this life isn't, 
it must not be for me. I obviously can't handle it. It's a me thing. I wasn't good enough to be here. I wasn't good enough to write software. I felt so useless and so tired and exhausted. I was so stressed all the time. And I felt so alone. But slowly I started to dig myself out. I sought out a therapist who I met with and still meet with every week. Uh, I learned about panic attacks, anxiety disorders, uh, imposter syndrome, and uh, isolation. I started taking antidepressants. Eventually, I was able to start feeling better, and I was able to get my heart rate back to more controllable rates. I started talking about my anxiety and was shocked to really discover that I was not at all alone in this. Uh, many of my friends and peers were experiencing the same self-doubts and anxieties about work and their place in this workforce. So that's kind of when I started thinking about the why. So why are people in tech so stressed out? And why don't we ever feel like we're empowered enough to push back for the sake of our own self-care and self wellness and the longevity of our careers? Why is writing software and maintaining software so stressful? And why is nobody talking about it? Why did it take so long for me to feel accepted in my community? Uh, so I started to do a little bit of research and came up with two main hypotheses um, that stress in software is kind of perpetuated by the media and the imagery, what uh, a software is and does and looks like um, in TV and film, and also these cool new startup cultures that are popping around all over the place. Um, so let's start about media and film. Um, so, thinking back of examples, there's only really two types of characters that we really see over and over again in like TV, movie, all that stuff. First one is we have <laughs> our anti-humor hacker type. So these guys are absolutely genius level. Uh, they're always coding. They code for fun. They also code just to hack into systems, which is a fun thing for some people. Uh, they're usually very antisocial, and they always prefer to work alone. Uh, they have all kinds of monitors open with terminal just scrolling, you know, just, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they have unlimited amount of knowledge and control of all things computer, all things electronic. And there's also on some sort of stimulant, or they must be because I don't know where all this energy comes from. So we can see in like modern time, we have some examples of like, you know, these, some sort of, you know, anxieties, mental, antisocial. Um, we also have Richard here who has like, he's plugged in, he's coding, he's by himself. He has like six Red Bulls. I mean, cool. Um, and even older movies have always kind of portrayed this image. Uh, we have this guy here who just seamlessly, I guess SSH is into some sort of console and can ride, knows all the commands for the system. Um, and here's for my monitor joke, like, you know, the matrix. Do you have some sort of understanding of what's going on here? I do not have. Um, so too long didn't read. That's not what my day-to-day -day looks like as a software engineer. Uh, I'm usually spending most of my time on Stack Overflow or asking people for help. Uh, <laughs> Um, and then our other second predominant uh, character that's out there is we have this anti-human geek type. So this uh, very socially awkward, very intelligent. Um, their computers are also, again, like they play games on computers, they work on computers, all about computers. Um, they usually exhibit some sort of interpersonal relationship issue and they're our comedic character. So we have Moss here from IT Crowd. And again, with Silicon Valley, we have these characters who, you know, are faced with anxieties and also just are not very, you know, like me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so do these characters act as a barrier of inclusion for people in tech? Like, I kind of feel like I didn't see myself in a lot of those roles. Maybe I am right. I really shouldn't be here. Um, but enough about my opinions. Uh, there's a study done in 2013 uh, 
kind of testing this hypothesis. Do, does the gendered uh, media act as a barrier for inclusion for women? Uh, so there was, uh, this study was done in Stanford and University of Washington. And uh, part one of the study asked participants to write down what you, the characteristics of a software engineer and computer scientist. So we see here they're, uh, you know, very in parallel with those images we just saw. Um, technology oriented, obsessed with all things computers, um, incredibly intelligent, and uh, predominantly male. One of the participants uh, came up with this quote when asked, hey, do you want to, like, are you interested in computer science at all? It's like, I mean, I, how can I be? I'm so not that person. I don't fit that role. I am different. I don't belong here. Another study took this and flipped it on its head. So we had participants read an article that kind of ran parallel with those stereotypes called study finds computer science contributes, continues to be dominated by male geeks. Uh, and then a non-stereotyped article, which was the inverse. Uh, after reading these articles, participants were asked, rate your interest in pursuing a career in computer science from one to seven. Um, and as you can see here, the blue is our stereotypical article. So playing in with those parallels from media, Women expressed a 1.5 interest in computers. After reading that article, men a little bit higher. But the non-stereotypical article, after women read that, you can see a very big increase in their interest in computer science and more electronic kind of focused fields. That's cool. So lack of reputation is kind of a limiter for us in software, right? And we'll get back to this and how we can kind of falter that. So on to the next thing, uh, our company cultures, and could they be fostering and even promoting stressful environments for all people involved? Uh, so one of my favorites is Move Fast Break Things uh, from Mark Zuckerberg, our favorite guy. Um, all of this, <laughs> we are iterating quickly, getting code out into production as fast as we can, all for the sake of innovation and being the first one out there. Um, but yeah, there's a time and place for it. Maybe rushing things isn't always the best. It depends on your team. There was also another study done uh, where software engineers were asked to rate their external causes of unhappiness and stress. And we can see here the time pressure, numero uno. Uh, so there's this, again, disconnect. Now it's Cultures are fostering, rushing faster, 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 whereas software engineering is such a creative kind of build, building things out field. If un software engineers are unhappy, you know, that leads to stressed out code, broken code, brittle code, code that has bugs, code that's just exhausted. And if we were to look at the happy, productive worker thesis, happy workers are more productive. So fostering kind of these cultures where people are appreciated and, you know, a little bit warmer. We can get more things done as opposed to stressing and pushing. Um, another cultural thing is like the real programmer syndrome. So not even like internally, but also externally. We saw those images from media, and I'm sure those stereotypes have been kind of perpetrated in those who work with software engineers too, right? So there's kind of like this idea of, oh, we got software engineers, they don't think coding's work, they love it. Uh, give them another ticket. Um, and they love coding so much, that's what they spend all their time doing. Um, can you get this feature to me this weekend? You know, just work this weekend. It's cool. You love it, don't you? But these kind of ideals permeate the industry's culture and also are reflected in the media that we see. These kind of like hacker types or geek types where their hobbies are computers and computers are their lives. And you know, that's not everybody. I know for sure that's not me. I'm different. I really don't belong. So how can we kind of play around with representation and you know, make social and 
societal change around what a software engineer or any role in tech is. Um, we can kind of be the representation that's out there. So think of being a mentor. Be the role model for the next generation of those in STEM. Uh, and be that person that you needed so badly that you didn't have. Also, let me know if you volunteer. I want to hear more. Um, and as for media representation, we're kind of getting on the right track, and we're getting better. There's definitely been a lot of resources out there. We now have book series for girls to get into coding as a hobby at a younger age. We have some modern TV shows and movies that are showing users that are girls in uh, computer roles. And we also need to pay respects to our past. And for those who've kind of paved the way for us to kind of give us those reins so that now we can move forward and be the next leaders in tech. So to all the ladies in the past, thank you so much. Um, we pledge to continue your legacy and also advocate for diversity in STEM and technology fields. Um, so reducing stress at home, what are some ways we can kind of not bring work home, set some boundaries for ourselves to be successful when we enter the workplace, when we enter these new modes? So one big thing is having a designated self-care day, just a day to rest and repair and really just give your mind a break. Engineering is so thought heavy, it's really hard to not notice the um, physical limitations and the physical symptoms of stress because you're so in the zone. Um, one big thing with my experience is Sunday was such a huge trigger for me. I would just sit there all Sunday worrying and panicking and thinking about work and then trying to do work. So I've forced myself uh, to make Sunday my designated self-care day. So now I pick up Poof and hang out with these guys in Colorado. Um, and yeah, it's good. It's good to look forward to something on Sunday, so think about ways and your favorite hobbies and things to do on Sundays, if that's your trigger there. Uh, so spend some time with the love of your life. Uh, it also helps to kind of designate this day too, so every Saturday I spend uh, the whole day with the love of my life. That's my Molly doc. Uh, we go hiking, um, but yeah, just putting in hard code barriers where you can See friends, see friends every Saturday, see your neighbors throw a party every Wednesday, something that there's concrete boundaries. Um, and don't tell my husband about this slide. <laughs> um, other small things, try meditation, try new things. Try to give your brain a break, try to give just you a break. Ways to relive and re-rest and getting sleep. Look into therapy if it's an option for you. Uh, talk to someone, just take care of yourself. Um, reducing plus stress at the workplace. So let's try to automate some things where we can. Not everything is your responsibility. Let's get some things off your plate. Uh, so set up dashboards, monitor and alerting tools that'll alert you when something's awry. Uh, you can put these on really important features like user registration, login, payment processing, anything that kind of keeps you and your business from making money. Um, that seems pretty important. Uh, so, you know, have these dashboards alert the appropriate teams with the appropriate messages. So you have much more control on where these messages are coming from, who they're going to, so maybe your engineering team now sees them first, and they can quickly work on a resolution first, instead of having your CEO uh, give a demo somewhere, and of course everything breaks, and then you hear about a bug that way, uh, which also comes with layers and layers of stress and all sorts of panic. <laughs> uh, recognize flaws in the process and be an advocate for improvement. Uh, remember, when software fails, it's a failure of process. It's not your fault. Um, let's say I ship something, a bug in my code ends up on production. 
you know, why didn't my test suite catch that? Why didn't a code review catch that? Why didn't testing on my staging environment catch that? Why didn't the QA layer that we have test that? So maybe there's an opportunity there to improve some of those processes so that you know and that feedback loop is much, much smaller um, and bugs a little less frequently make it to the limelight. Uh, advocate for retros these gifts make me laugh. Uh, advocate for retrospectives for you and your teams. You know, how, do, how does your team know if there are issues if no one's talking about it? Uh, cr create a safe space that's non-judgmental, where your team comes every week, two weeks, to discuss process improvements and things that have been really stressful and hurting them this week. So you can change it. Uh, be a little more explicit and upfront about trade-offs. Uh, get that feedback back to whoever is dictating your um, workflow as soon as possible. It's OK to say no. Sometimes you might bring back feedback. That's something that your PM didn't know, a feature that didn't exist. Um, <laughs> uh, and make prioritization your new best friend. If everything's an emergency, is there such things as emergencies? Uh, that is the million dollar question. Um, really push back and see if you can bring up the conversation of what is the most valuable thing for me to contribute and to give the best value for our user base. You know, if I'm working on five teams, that with five different projects, each of those projects are now delayed because focus time is just non-existent. And protect yourself from these new open office space layouts for offices. Um, anytime someone comes up and taps you on the shoulder, that is an expensive distraction that takes away from your dev time. I'm not saying don't talk to people. That's not uh, <laughs> what I'm advocating for here. But there's a cost to these things. Like, oh, hey, Jackie, can you look into this bug? I think there's something wrong with our login flow. You know, oh, you know, I have to stop what I'm doing. I'm delaying a project. There's a cost to that. So one thing is use like an external object uh, to show if you're in the zone or if you have open office hours. Uh, one thing our team did, we had little octopus stuffed animals. The one side was a frowny face, and you could flip it over and it'd be a smiley face. So a frowny face meant, don't come over here. And smiley face meant, let's talk about things. Uh, and make your workspace as lovely as you are. Uh, make your desk a really happy place to be, a warm place, an environment, mentally, psychologically safe place to be. Mine is filled with squishy toys and stress toys. Um, <laughs> and also pictures of dogs, people I love, but mostly dogs. Um, and lots of plants. And ask for help. You're not invincible and you're not responsible for knowing everything. Technology is so intense and there will always be things you don't know. Um, and just know that we're here for you. Those who have had more experiences, they just had more failures, right? So learn from those, learn from other people. Don't ever be afraid to ask for help. Um, and set some boundaries and take time to care for yourself. <laughs> um, you know, it's okay to maybe, once your commute is over and I enter my apartment, I'm gonna turn my computer off. Seems fair, right? Uh, maybe I'm not gonna work every weekend. Uh, maybe slack, no slack during dinner, no slack during meals. Don't eat by your computer. <laughs> Don't get into that habit. And if you're not feeling well, you're not going to perform well. So it's OK to take a day off or a couple days off just to help yourself. Um, and Sandy Matz says, coffee's not a food group. We are not um, robots that are fueled by coffee. Um, <laughs> it will only, you know, it will only go so far until it starts actually hurting you. 
Um, and just like check in at the workplace for your posture. Um, like I said earlier, it's such a heavy mental game. It's all thinking, 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 problem solving. Just check in every once in a while, put a timer on. Make sure you're not in the classic hunched over kind of position. And be an advocate for mental health in your workplace. Uh, demonstrate healthy behavior and encourage others to do the same. Uh, just have one-on-ones with other team members just to have a relationship there uh, so that when maybe when you're feeling stressed out or when they're feeling stressed out, they feel connected and feel like they can come to you for support. Uh, and just, you know, be a mama bird and keep an eye on others. If you notice people eating at their desk and never leaving their desk, maybe ask them to get a coffee uh, or just get out of the office, go for a walk. And also share your story. We can promote change by just awareness in this stuff and, you know, we can, we're more powerful than we think we are. <laughs> um, so share your story. Selfishly, I want to hear about your experience in technology. Uh, so today, come find me. That's my dog. Isn't she great? Uh, <laughs> uh, come say hi. Share with someone you met today how you're doing in software, how you're like that crazy lifestyle you picked. I don't know how you did it. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, or you can find me online. I'm going to post these slides on my website. So if you want to take a look, uh, feel free to do so. Also, my Instagram is full of my adventures with my dog, so I highly recommend uh, a follow there. Um, yeah, so too long didn't read. Thank you so much, and take care of yourselves and each other, and we're in it for the long run. <laughs>